really is the really oh my god hey what's up guys Aaron here and welcome back to another episode of my f1 manager 23 career mode with mclaren trying to return them to glory it is a long road as you may have seen with the first race it was a difficult one but a realistic one i think you, you gotta say with where mclaren were at the start of the 2023 season but we do have upgrades and research on the way the chassis research will be done in five Five days time so uh you know we've got the saudi arabian grand prix in 11 days so depending on how you know quickly we can manufacture the new chassis we could have a new chassis in time for round number two and then onwards will be the side pods and then the underfloor as the last upgrade here but we can look into some more of course and keep it rolling we've got 16 million dollars so there's still plenty of funding there to, to, to fund new parts and also maybe some more facility upgrades because we did upgrade the uh, wind tunnel last time out might even look at something else you know we've got the cash to spare we feel like okay maybe we'll just you know do a long-term investment we'll look into that but right now just want to continue to kind of get to grips with the race then we learned a lot from the first episode with the way the tire compounds were reacting the two stop versus the one stop with lando versus oscar um and i i think you know as the car gets better we'll be able to try some some different things basically to maybe try and get those elusive first points but We've got a brand new ATR period that begins. So that's, you know, we, we used all the CFD and wind tunnel last time out, which was good. So now we have a new set, but we do have to wait until this research is done because we don't have any more engineers available to actually research anything. We're also scouting one technical chief to try and upgrade our staff here uh, because this man is rated 77. I mean, we're scouting a 79 rated uh, technical chief, so that might be a good step in the right direction. But apart from that, there really isn't much else to do apart from actually get this upgrade made and then get on towards the second race right chassis design is complete so now if we go to the car manufacture and we make that new chassis here we've got the ml 23 c2 and let's see what we can do so we need well hold on, that hopefully two but the race is in six days time that's gonna take that's too long so if we rush it seven days that's still emergency costs us a lot more emergency is like so much more 1.6 million dollars versus 200 ah oh, damn it that's just really frustrating isn't it that is really frustrating if we can't get it in time rushing it i don't want to do emergency like that's just i mean our car was so bad it uh, our car was so slow in the first race. Maybe it is an emergency to make one of them, at least now. Maybe we spend a bit of money now making it immediately or not. Um... You know what? Let's just bite our tongue. Let's not. Let's not rush it. Let's not do an emergency because there there is no point. There is no point. Um, we may as well just wait. So that's a bit unfortunate. I thought we were going to get the chassis upgrade in time, but obviously the manufacturing does take a bit of time there. So we'll go for making two of these. First one gets done in ten days. Next one in twenty. If I rush both of them a little bit, one of them gets done in seven, the other 14, that will guarantee we have two new chassis in time for the third race of the season. And I think from last time, we do need to make a new front wing because we've only got four of them. Ideally, you kind of want maybe at least maybe five floating about. So we'll make a new front wing because one of them got damaged in the practice session in the first race. And the scouting has now been done for our potential new technical chief, Tariq Basara. Um, so he is 79 rated. He's open to negotiations. Uh, what's the contract we've got our current technical chief on? Because that will kind of inform us maybe on what we can do. So two years, 988, and that's the cost to break the contract. So it will cost us a little bit, but I think we should get this going straight away. We shouldn't waste time because this can really give us a long-term impact. So let's go ahead and propose a two-year contract again. Uh, oh, we can actually do starting next season. So the cost to break the contract actually uh, cuts in half then because, you know, he's he's got two two years left. So if we do next season. We're only breaking next seasons. Uh, but I, I think for this, for a driver, it's a bit different. For a technical chief, I think we need to get this done straight away to actually reap any kind of long-term benefits. Salary-wise, I'm going to try and lowball a bit compared to our current technical chief we'll go for 800k signing bo i'll give it a little signing bonus of uh, 100k so in a one-off way he's matching the salary for this year but then obviously next year he's being cut down by 100k so let's see if he's going to go for that sending proposal 
And it is... Oh, no. Declined. Okay, he liked the bonus. But uh, he, he wants a higher salary. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We can adjust that. I'm going to go for 1 million. And I'm going to bring down this bonus now. Since we know he, he enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. But, you know, you're not, you're not going to get such a big bonus if you're, if you're wanting the salary to be high. So let's go with that. He's still pretty high on patience. One, you know, that's pretty much nearly... We can't match our current salary exactly for Neil. So, Tariq, please... Just accept the one million dollars per year. Come on, that just sounds ridiculous. Oh, come on, man. You, you greedy man. You want more than one million a year. Are you mad? Right, no bonus. You're not, you're getting like a 10k bonus. That's it. 10k bonus. Patience is medium. So this is it. This has to be it. 101, 1 million, 100k for two seasons. Okay, I'm going for one season, actually, because you're pissing me off. Uh, let's go for 1.2 million for just one year. One year. Come on. Come on. Accept it. You know you want the job. Okay, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. What are other technical chiefs on? I'm wondering. 80, like 80, like, like Alpha Tauris or uh, Simeone Resta. Used to be for, at Ferrari. Let's just scout him. I'm curious what his contract's like. Do we even know? No, we don't know. Standard scout. I'm just going to base that off. You know, I'm not. I'm not backing down from Tariq, but he's playing hardball, and I'm just not about spending that much money. You know, we're we're, we're already down to 14.7 million, and the side pods have been uh, researched as well, so we can get on to actually making the side pods, even though they won't come in for a little while. But we'll make uh, well side pods three of them. Um, should we rush this as well? Maybe just to get them through five days, 10, 15. Yeah, that's calm. That's calm. And so it's uh, not too bad in terms of the approach, but I feel like it's better than the uh, be be better than the emergency one, obviously. It's still a bit of money, 675k to add on to make these three side pods, but I, I really rapidly need some upgrades because otherwise we're just going to be facing some pain for these first few races. And I don't want the races all to be the same pain every single time. Right, so practice has gone very weirdly. We've got Piastri with a 91 setup satisfaction and Lando 48%. I don't know how he's got such a bad setup satisfaction after doing a pretty decent job from Bahrain um, with simulating through. I even adjusted this setup midway through on the practice session and still only on 48. So in terms of driver prep overall, 95% for Piastri, only 72 for Lando. We have a chance maybe in quali just to adjust the setup a little bit more for Lando one last time to try and get him a little bit happier but in terms of the uh yeah the driver prep piastri may looking uh, may look a little bit better around jeddah surprisingly which is uh, going to give him a chance to maybe shine That's a bit more a bit. Right, i'm adjusting lando setup to get back into his optimal range he's had some very weird windows compared to oscar where he was pretty much in the window straight away from like fp1 so yeah it happens race to race so let's see hopefully this this setup will be good enough but i'm gonna go into q1 and unlike in the first episode i'm gonna try manually um, taking control of the drivers during their qualifying laps. Because I saw a comment that that may be the better way to go in terms of uh, using out the, the, the ploy and just generally maybe they'll go a bit quicker. And hopefully we could get try and get one of these guys in the Q2. That's really where we're at. This is the, the very bottom start of this return to glory. We're literally just trying to get into Q2 for the first time on a Saturday. Sending Oscar out first. And we're going to just see how this manual works. And then I'm going to... Actually, no, to be fair, I'll send Oscar out on his own. I'm going to do Lando manually, and then I'll swap them around, and I'll do manual vice versa, just to kind of test it out, basically. And Oscar's got a high setup, so maybe on his own, with the AI doing its thing, he might actually be pretty damn handy. So let's see. Uh, we've got clean air right now, but I'm just wary of what happened in Bahrain when I sent Lando out, and he just had, like, a Red Bull right in front of him. So let's just wait a little bit longer. And then come out with a couple of other cars, maybe, just so we don't get kind of awkwardly out of sync of some other people. Right, we're going through here. Manual control. Manual control will give you full control over pace, fuel usage, and ER strategies. This will only last for the duration of the run and will be reset. Okay, that's calm. Okay, so pace right now is on conserve. But we're going to up the fuel to push. Burn, burn a lot of that fuel. And then we're on harvest right now. When we get to the final corner... We're going to be on absolute deploy and full send. Full send attack. These tyres are a bit cold, you know. Maybe should have gone full attack a little bit uh, sooner. Right, deploy. Let's go. Let's go. Pushing everything. Tyre temp's a little bit cold still. We definitely... Okay, that's one thing to note. Maybe manually control it on the outlap as well to get the tyre temps in. 
Because if this is what they're starting on, on the automatic, then I can see why maybe they're not going so well. As we go into turn one, there's traffic with the Aston. That's not really that ideal, but it is what it is. Tyres are still cold, so definitely manual control may be needed to get the tyre temps up. No wonder they're maybe uh, doing so poorly on this first lap. Right, driver confidence is building. Fernando, tyre temps are good. We're just maybe going to get to overheating right at the end of the lap, but that's calm. Bit of traffic. Oh, that, that looked a little bit slow, you know. I, I heard him lift off a little bit into the final corner. That was unfortunate. Let's see what the lap time is, though, versus Oscar on the automatic. Lando across the line, and it is whoa, two tenths slower. Two tenths slower. I don't even know what his setup is like, what, what he's thinking about this setup. What is, what is, what is his setup saying? What, what's the confidence? Oh, wait, hang on. Highest satisfaction set. A hundred percent. He's on a hundred percent. And he did two tenths slower than Piastri. What's going on? And I'm going to send Lando out. I'm going to take manual control of Piastri. And we're going to really warm up those tyres through the lap. Take manual control of Lando. Warm up those tyres through the lap. Actually go full out attack now. Because Piastri is already at the end of his lap now. So he's going to be starting the, the flying lap very, very soon. Push the fuel and deploy. Okay. And then Lando, where is he? He's on, I think he's halfway through the lap. Keep looking after the tire. Yeah, so push the fuel. He's still harvesting. Tire temps are right. We're going to push through this first sector with Lando. He's on fuel. He's still harvesting, harvesting all the way through. The Attack, push the fuel and deploy. Like For some reason, he's got a little bit less battery, I think, from the manual, pro yeah, manual lap we did in the first place. Well, let's see. And then through this sec through this okay. next sector, I think, sector two, will calm the tire temps down to aggressive just to keep the temps low. You don't need to go that aggressive through this next bit. So you can just keep the temps lower Key thing is through to keep there. The tire in good shape. Keep just like tire in good shape. Just like our engineer said. Just okay. the key thing, keep the temps in a good shape through the lap. All right, speed that up. Just trying to focus on both drives at the same time. All right, tire temps are going up a little bit. Let's go drop down to standard there. Standard here for Lando as well, just to bring them down as we go on through the lap. They're overheating a little bit by the end of it. Full out attack to the line. Is that going to be better? I hope it is. I hope it is. It's no. It's two yellows. It is two yellows. That is not what we want. And Lando has not got too much battery. It seems like I am not as good as the computer doing these laps. Although we are right now both into Q2. So swings and roundabouts. But battery is empty for Lando. It is a green first sector. Two yellows. And it's not an improvement. He didn't improve his lap time. Neither did Oscar, I don't think, to be honest. So I think that uh, says it all, maybe. Let's just leave it to the computer next time. But we're both right now looking pretty all right. P13 and 15 at the moment. Five minutes to go, though. Hamilton will definitely knock out Norris, unfortunately. So it looks like maybe Oscar might be our big bet to get into Q2 here. Despite Lando now having 100% setup satisfaction. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly, we say. Allegedly. It says it right there. Like, unless it's a, unless it's glitching, it says it right there. I'm going to send him out again. I'm going to send Lando out again. Probably could send Oscar out as well, to be honest. There's more. There's enough time. May as well. We don't need the soft tyres for the rest of the Saturday because we're literally just trying to get into Q2, really. So I may as well send them both out. This time, I'll just let the computer do its thing and see what it can get. And you have a... Oh, check your mirrors. What happened? Oh, no. Did he get another grid penalty? Did he get another grid penalty? Right, let's see what they're doing. Two yellows, not going much quicker. Battery's empty now for Lando. He's drained it even on the uh, computer-generated lap. Will Lando improve? Probably not. Two yellows. Battery empty for Piastri as well. We've really drained them quite a lot here at Jeddah. No improvement for Lando. He's knocked out. And Piastri... Oh, no. Piastri's out as well. Okay, that icon was for at risk then, I guess, in the knockout stage. Not a penalty. Both drivers knocked out. Unless Piastri improves this, but it's two yellows. But we've got no battery. No battery there. We've got real ERS problems around Jeddah of holding our charge for the whole lap. But P16 and 17 is an improvement from last episode. And that is a positive we have to take in this very long return to glory. We have to take every little... You know when I got so excited about that one overtake, Lando made a bar aim. This is an improvement from Bahrain grid slot. 16 and 17. 
just a tenth away from Q2. You've got to take the little grains of solace. And in the end, oh my god, 18th and 19th. Are you kidding me? Someone else put in some... Oh, we don't even have that. We got beaten by the Alpha Tauris. We got beat by Nick De Vries. Absolutely in the mud. Right, strategy-wise, we've got we've got a one-stop here. Hards to mediums, or mediums to hards. I think we go for this. I think we go for this, you know. Um, I'm going to put Oscar on medium to hard, and I'm going to put Lando on hard to medium. Just see what they can do, you know, the other way around from each other. But yeah, look, car setup, 100%. So Lando really did like that final setup, but it just wasn't enough. That's how just poor how poor the car is. <laughs> it's literally an orange wagon R plus right now. <laughs> I know how team principals feel now, where they can't really do much from the pit wall when their car's so bad. Right, the one stop, medium to hard, hard to mediums. Let's hope for some sort of chaos with a safety car, maybe to help us out. But the hards worked really well for for, for Lando at Bahrain, mediums as well. So with both of them on a one stop this time, rather than Oscar on a two stop, let's see if they can both feel a bit better in the race, I guess. The drivers are lined up on the grid here at the Jeddah Corniche circuit, preparing for 50 flat out laps under the lights. There's a lot of talk about that man, Nico Hülkenberg. Starting in the top 10 is good, but they'll need to play the race really well to not lose places. This should certainly be a good one, folks. We're now moments away from this, the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And it's... Right, round two, on the way. Let's see how we do off the line. Oscar may be able to make a move to the inside of one. Alpha Tauri at least. Come on, mate. Get, get De Vries. Yes, come on. Put him in his place. Come on, Oscar. Up to P17, maybe. No, he's down to 18th and we've not made the overtake. Oh, God. Right, let's calm this down because really our strategy is all about going long term. What are, what are other people on? A lot of people on soft. So there is definitely a two-stop race going on for a lot of people. So this could give us a good opportunity to maybe jump someone like we did with Hulkenberg, uh, with Lando Norris and Joe Guan Yu at the Bahrain GP. Just got to play it long term and not get too ahead of ourselves right now at the start of this race. Just calm things down in terms of the pushing levels. And just see how we go. But speaking of Joe Guan Yu, he's uh, got us for company as he looks to maybe try and get past Lando in P19. It's going to be a long, long first stint for us to really see some progress as Joe immediately is looking for the overtake. Deary me, this McLaren is ropes right now at the start of this career. My God. Oh, we've been overtaken. We've been overtaken. And he's got 100% confidence in the setup. It doesn't matter if you've got 100% confidence in a setup. If that set, uh, confidence in setup is about a car with literally no pace, it won't matter. Oh, there's a crash! Oh, safety car! There's a crash! Sonoda! Sonoda spun it in the final corner! Safety yes! Okay, calm things down, everyone. Drive. Harvest. Get okay. that on conserve. Let's save some fuel that we can use later. Big incident for Sonoda. Crashed at turn... 27, apparently. Let's see what he did. Just a bit of a rear end. So oh, no, he's hit the wall and come across. And Jesus, Oscar narrowly, narrowly missed making contact with him. We could have been out there with Oscar if we weren't careful. Right, safety car's coming in. So I'm going to go full out attack for these guys on the tyre to try and get the temps up. And also pushing on fuel. We'll go neutral on ERS, though, just to be wary of that. But we've lost a couple of laps here in this Grand Prix, so that might make our life a little bit easier with the one stop. I think most people will still be doing their two stop if they're on soft, slap five. So I think they'll still be on, on a two stop, really. But let's ride on board with Oscar then as we get on to the restart then. Verstappen leading the way from Perez. One, two for Red Bull, shock horror. Two by two, really. Noah's Ark, two Ferrari, two Aston, two Merck, two Haas and two Alpines. It really is... Noah and his arc here in Jeddah. And it's a bit of a slow getaway for us with Piastri as the Williams cars are pulling away from us here around Saudi Arabia. Joe has uh, stayed on that overtake on Lando. And Lando on the hards. I think he's the only man on hard. So no wonder he's not got a lot of pace here. But it's going to come back to us. It's going to come back to us. Oh, Joe's closing up for an overtake. Piastri staying on the racing line to defend. 
for now. And we are somewhat keeping up with the Williams. We're just outside one second for DRS. Really need to try and get to there. Maybe going for... I, I might go for a bit of deploy here. Try and get, get Piastri up to the Williams. Okay. Right, DRS enabled. And we're just one-tenth away from DRS off the Williams. We're now within one second. But Joe is behind us. But we're now picking up a little bit of pace here, I think. With the battle assist helping us out a little bit with Oscar. And now, because these Williams are fighting so much, you've got Albon trying to get past his teammate Sargent. And they're both stuck behind De Vries. So uh, that's helping us out to kind of close up a little bit more. But that's still only for P14. Uh, so we're, we're hoping that we can maybe jump some other people with the one stop. Really, really hoping so. Uh, Oscar's got DRS on De Vries, who's been overtaken by the two Williams. Here we go. Piastri going for the move on De Vries to the inside of turn one. Come on, P16. This is where our race maybe can begin a little bit. Piastri on the inside. De Vries still fighting him, but Oscar is going to keep his foot in. Please get the overtake done. Please get the overtake done. Yes. And the tyre temps are looking good now okay. as well for Oscar. No, he's come back at his. Oh, what a fight this is between us and the Alpha Tauri. Oscar, round the outside. Come on, mate. Come on. Get the overtake done. Yes. We got it. We got it. Nice. Right. Push on. Push on. We're going to go just balanced on the fuel. That was a good overtake, that was. That was a very good overtake. Going to deploy and push a bit with Oscar now. Let's Use bridge that gap button. to the Williams. And then with Lando, we're closing up here to Joe. Let's go for the move. I've got him on aggression approach yeah, let's try and get this overtake done if we can with lando and then we are gaining with piastri just trying to get these tire temps down though as well all right here we go drs will be available drs available for piastri as well right here we go come on come on come on lando let's get this done let's get this done into the last corner maybe with drs on the outside yes good work good oh god nearly hit the wall nearly hit the wall Please don't come back at us. We're good. Lovely. That's what we like to see. Let's just watch a replay of that because we missed it a little now bit. Speeding through. Good overtake on the outside with DRS. Nice. Right, the two Williams are fighting. Hammer and Tong, they're side by side. They're surely going to lose some time to each other. And that's maybe when we can start closing in. But they've actually grown the gap to two seconds despite fighting each other which is a little bit frustrating. Let's go a little bit deploy here just to try and catch them up a little bit. We're on high... We're on burning fuel as well already. And then with Norris burning fuel, but I want to keep a decent amount for the medium stint for him, basically. That's why I'm not overusing it right now. But we can probably push a little bit on the hards because the temps are pretty good. Oh, Piastri having to defend. Having to defend against De Vries, who's coming back at us. Lando's looking all calm. But uh, Piastri can't shake off De Vries. And he can't bridge the 1.5 to Williams. Oh, De Vries is a pain in the arse. He is annoying us. He is annoying us a lot. No, there he goes. Oh, no. Come on. You can keep this position. Oh, we've been done. We've been done by the Alpha Tauri. God damn it. And now Piastri has been caught by Lando. His tire temperature's a bit high. Lando's looking pretty good. And Lando's making the overtake on his own teammate on the outside. I've not told them they can't fight. And Lando is legitimately going for that move on the hards. And he's up into 17. Oh, crash. Crash. Another safety car. Yes. Another safety yes, car. Have. Multiple cars have been involved. And it's the Haas and the Alpines, maybe, the as they then. snake it's through. I think this is... Oh, big crash. Massive crash. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. That was huge. We didn't get to see too much of it because it kind of got cut off there. Well, then the Alpine span hit the wall, like came that, flying the back onto the, the circuit, the and it's both Alpines out. Oh, my God. It's, it's just like real life. It's just like real life. Both Alpines have crashed each other out. Oh, my God. It really is the really... Oh, my God. Red flag. Did we get involved with this crap? Oh, no. Piastri. Is Piastri out? Oh, my goodness me. What on earth is happening here? <laughs> the amount... Oh, no, Lando. Lando, don't get caught up in it, man. Oh, my God. There's a fire. Oh, Jesus Christ. That is such a big crash. Grid flag. No overtaking. Delta positive. 
Oh my god. Oh my okay, god. So we've got De Vries. Oh Not my god. Room. What a massive crash! Red flag, red flag situation for the first time on this game. Oh my god, look at that. That's unreal. Jesus. Yep, that sums it up. That really does sum it up. Right, time until session restarts. 20 minutes. So how many, uh, what's going to go on here? So, oh no, Lando retired. Damage to the shit. I, I I knew he hit. He freaking hit that Alpine chassis damage. So Lando's out. Oscar's up to P17. Crazy. Okay, we only have one 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 car in this. I really thought he really should have just stopped there, and he would have been fine. He would have still be in the race, but he kept going forwards and got involved in that crash. So um, lap 19. So we've got 30 laps to go. I think just hard tires to the end. Surely hard tires to the end. That's got to be got to be the Got to be the way, really. Oh. All right, here we go. Soon, Ferrari's on pole. Race. It's the second restart. Oh, and it's Leclerc that leads from Perez on the inside. Can Perez get the lead? Oh, bit of contact between Checo and Leclerc. Verstappen down to P3. Signs for the Alonso. We're up to P13 because it's not just P17 we're at. Because so many other cars left that we've jumped up to P13 on the hards. Quite a few other people on the hards. So there are other people thinking the same thing as me going to the end. But um, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. It wasn't the best restart because I, I forgot to push him on the restart. But we've only got one car to concentrate on. And there's a ding-dong battle going on here with Joe and Piastri. Come on, mate. Let's go to visor camera and watch this battle. Is he still there on the inside? I think he might be. Yes, he is. Oh, look at that. Wheel to wheel. With the visor cam. And Piastri loses the position, unfortunately. Right, very interesting. Very, very interesting stuff. Right, we've got Leclerc from Perez. Verstappen fast up the Grand Prix. We're going to the end. How many people are on hards? One, two, three, four. Okay, not too many, actually. I think we could actually still jump some people. All right, here we go. Piastri's going to go for the re-overtake with DRS here. Fast. The Alfa Romeo on the outside. P13. And now we've got some clean air. Let's push a bit with the clean air. All right, so sit rep on lap 34. Perez leads the way. It's a Red Bull 1-2 battle. Verstappen and Perez nearly crash into each other, fighting for the lead. Uh, Verstappen probably is going to make an overtake here. Let's look at the visor cam. He comes through and gets P1. Leclerc relegated to th uh, third place and Verstappen faster laps. Sainz, Alonso, Hamilton, Russell, Stroll... P8, Hamilton, looks like he's going to go for a move on Fernando Alonso. And Alonso down to P6. Then you've got Stroll, like I said. Hulkenberg and, uh, and Magnussen, the two Hasses bringing up the rear for the points. Albon may be looking at knocking on the door for points. Then there's a much bigger gap to Bottas and then a huge gap to us. We just don't have any sort of race pace here whatsoever whatsoever it's just a bit unfortunate and so with that not and so with that not really much happening in our race and we go all the way to the last half of the grand prix where verstappen and perez are still fighting perez on the outside trying to get the lead they're side by side can perez do this let's go on board oh he's getting close but not quite close enough it's two by two then with the ferraris astins Ha, Mercs, Haas cars in the top 10. Albon just outside the points. And then it's still Bottas, ourselves and Piastri and Joe in P13. Really not much else to really report apart from this fight going on between Perez and Verstappen. And does Perez have anything to close up and overtake as we go through the last couple of corners here into the last sector? Perez, five tens back. He has DRS, I think. Yep, he has DRS open. He's gaining. He's gaining on Verstappen. But I don't think he'll be able to do it. I think Verstappen is going to hold through a second win. Surprise, surprise of this 2023 season on F1 Manager. The Saudi Arabian Grand Prix from Perez after all of that chaos. And for us, well, we just started the last lap, funny enough. And we're going to just bring home this P13. Unfortunately, can't do much else. And we didn't even get a chance to get one of the fastest pit stops because we didn't make a single pit stop in that entire race. 
Oh, dreary me. 3.2 million earned, though. But uh, again, another frustrating beginning race for this series. But things are going to start coming good because next episode, we do have our first ever upgrades coming to the car finally. We've got that new chassis. And it's kind of poetic, you know, Sha uh, Lando broke his chassis in that red flag and in comes a new one. So hopefully we'll be doing a little bit better there. And we got, we're getting there. We're getting closer. P13, we're three, three places away from that elusive point in Formula 1 here in this first season. Um, we're not the only team that hasn't scored points. So we're not, we're in good company. But guys, if you have enjoyed that one, a very enthralling one with that red flag crash, I must say, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.